My name is Yasser, I'm a senior lecturer in pharmacy practice and I'm also a specialist antimicrobial pharmacist in secondary care. So today I'm going to answer a very frequent question that I get on the Microfarm Instagram page and that is what is the term junior pharmacist? You probably see the term junior pharmacist and it's not one that's really well understood within the pharmacy profession, particularly if you're studying as an undergraduate. So if you're currently studying pharmacy at a university level, you probably don't understand the term junior pharmacist. So that's what we're going to explore today. So generally you'll see the term junior pharmacist being advertised when it's a hospital pharmacist role. So comparing this to the term junior doctor, this is something that a lot of medics are probably more familiar with and that's because after five years of studying medicine at an undergraduate level, you are then expected to work as a junior doctor for the NHS. The term junior pharmacist, however, is only really used within the hospital sector, so within secondary care. And that's why it's one that really isn't well understood. That's because if you work in community pharmacy, you won't be given the title junior pharmacist and rather you're often given the term pharmacist. So what does the term junior pharmacist actually mean? The term junior pharmacist means that that individual has studied four years as an undergraduate in pharmacy and after they have graduated, they have then done their foundation training year. Sometimes you know it as the trainee pharmacist year because the term trainee pharmacist is a term that's often given within this year. And after that foundation training year is complete, you then move on to a junior pharmacist role when you're working in a hospital for the NHS. That then brings me on to the next point, and that's what does a junior pharmacist actually do? So let's explore some of the roles and responsibilities of a junior pharmacist. I worked for a junior pharmacist for the NHS for approximately two years prior to specializing for the NHS. The term pharmacist will mean that you're an expert in medicine, you're an expert within that field, and you will have an understanding of what medications do and how they impact the human body. Let's look at the roles and responsibilities that you'll often find on these job applications for a junior pharmacist role. The main thing that you'll be doing is checking prescriptions for errors. You'll be identifying whether or not a medication is safe and effective for the patient that it's being used for. This often happens on a ward setting. Quite often a junior pharmacist role will be ward based. That means the majority of your time you'll be spending on a ward. You'll then be checking if that medication is being given in a suitable form. Is it being given in a way that it should be? Should the patient be receiving a tablet, capsule, or should they be receiving the medication intravenously or intramuscularly? You will then look at whether or not that dose is appropriate in accordance with the patient's blood test results. Let's say in accordance with their kidney function, in accordance with how their liver is functioning. So you look at all the factors that you need to consider when you're ensuring a medication is appropriate for a patient. So like I said to you, the large majority of your work would be working on a ward. So it's your responsibility to ensure that patients that are newly admitted to the ward, you check what medication they're taking at home and you see whether or not this has been prescribed for the patient. If it hasn't been prescribed or if there's any particular medications that haven't been prescribed, you're checking whether or not there's an appropriate reason why they haven't been prescribed. You're ensuring patients that require critical medication, such as insulin, such as medication for epilepsy, is being ordered in an appropriate and timely manner, or if they have brought it in, you have to ensure that it's prescribed on their medication chart, whether that medication chart be a physical chart or electronic chart, and to ensure that they receive that medication. And you'll participate in ward rounds, you'll participate with other healthcare professionals to ensure that you have an understanding of why patients are admitted, you have an understanding of what medications you will see prescribed for these patients and whether or not it's done so in an appropriate manner. You'll be responsible for answering questions from other healthcare professionals. Let's say there's a patient that then develops an acute kidney injury and as a result of that acute kidney injury, the medical team don't want to give the patient medication that may damage their kidneys further or is at risk of accumulating in the body if the kidneys are damaged. And this is very important. So if 
if the kidneys are damaged and medications are excreted via the kidneys, then you're concerned about the, that medication accumulating in the body and it could cause toxicity, it could cause side effects. Um, and if there's severe side effects associated with the medication and the main root of it being eliminated is the kidneys, you could be quite concerned. So it's your responsibility to identify whether or not we should be withholding some medications whilst this patient develops kidney injury. It's also very important to ensure that medications that are being prescribed for a patient are in line with current guidelines. Guidelines take into account uh, current evidence that supports the use of particular medications and you want to ensure that that patient in particular is receiving the best therapy for a particular condition. You will also be responsible for ensuring patients are discharged appropriately. Once they are ready to go home from the hospital, you're ensuring that they're leaving with the correct medication. You're ensuring that all the information on their discharge letter is accurate and all that information with regards to their medication is, is accurate because that will then go to their GP and the GP will then continue that medication. So any inaccuracies within the discharge letter could then lead to inaccuracies once the patient is home and once the patient receives their medication from their community pharmacy. Within your role, you may also be expected to be involved in any clinical audits where you're auditing a best practice, you're auditing whether or not, let's say for example, whether or not new guidelines are being adhered to and try to identify how improvements can be made within the practice. You may also be involved in teaching those members of staff that are less experienced. You may be involved in teaching trainee pharmacists during their foundation year with regards to how to conduct themselves within a ward, how to order medication within a ward, processes that you do on a day-to-day -day basis. Sometimes you may have the opportunity to be involved in the process of writing or updating new guidelines, which is a great opportunity for pharmacy professionals to be involved in. It gives you a good understanding of the considerations when developing a guideline, taking into account national guidelines and then taking into account local guidelines or local concerns or uh, local matters of importance. So this could involve, for example, if there's a particular high level of resistance uh, with a particular bacteria, you may not want to be going for one antibiotic that is advised by nationally and you may go for another antibiotic option because there's lower levels of resistance. So it gives you a very good understanding of the considerations of making a guideline, working with different healthcare professionals when developing guidelines and it's a great opportunity for your learning. And this, in a nutshell, is the role of a junior pharmacist working for the NHS in the United Kingdom. I also have a video where I discuss any tips for preparing for a hospital pharmacist interview for a junior pharmacist role. So subscribe to the channel and check out my other videos. Hopefully you found this useful and I'll see you in the next one.